I am not a morning person. So for years, I have really struggled with the idea of getting up and doing any sort of routine, whether it be spiritual or even physical, before I absolutely had to. I saw prayer and meditation as something to be crossed off of my holy checklist every day in order to appease God. I still struggle with that sentiment. Now I realize that carving out time and, if possible, some space to communicate with God is the greatest gift I can give back to myself. But this isn't just a space for good feelings of peace and tranquility. It's a preparation ground for the battles that we are sure to face each day. It's the place where we suit up in the armor of God. It's the place we do battle for ourselves and for our loved ones. You need a space to pray. Hey y'all, welcome or welcome back to my channel, Design and Dysfunction, where we talk about real life design for real life dysfunctions because let's face it we all have them my name is heather and today i am going to be showing you my prayer room slash office i just finished it probably about a week ago and let me tell you the devil does not want you to watch this video so you should watch it okay i know y'all saw that my video went wonky again that's okay so did the sound this is like my fifth time trying to <laughs> to get the sound right just in this take so I'm going to try to hold this microphone. Let's see if it works and let's get on with the video. You have no idea what I've gone through to create this thing. Um, you'll see in the video, but yes, I have spilt carrot juice somehow on this floor twice. I've gotten COVID. I have had like stomach bugs and it's just my sound has gone bad. My lighting has gone bad. Everything that could go wrong with this went wrong with this. And I don't even know if I'm staring at the lens, so I'm so sorry. <laughs> Whew, it's been wild. The first part of this video will be me showing you the process I went through to basically clear out what was a storage room and turn it into my office. So I'll be showing you the paint choices, how I came across the wallpaper, just what was going on in my head while I was coming up with the room. I kind of just went with it. It's one of those like, you'll, you'll definitely see that my process is sometimes not the most organized for myself. If I was doing this for a friend or just someone else, I would have a much more organized methodology going on. But most of us have a harder time designing for ourselves because we know all of the options and the opportunities that we could take. So it was just more difficult. Also, I was working within my own budget. It's harder to spend your own money <laughs> than it is to spend someone else's usually. So I'll just show you the process that I went through to get to this point. And then I will take you around the room and show you basically everything that I have and also how it functions as a prayer room and as an office. Also, before I get into the room tour, I want to say that I have not always had this kind of space to devote to myself. Um, when I was homeschooling in the last house that we lived in, I actually had to homeschool in my bedroom, all three kids ages. I think it was kindergarten through sixth grade at the time, and it was difficult to say the least, but the Lord got us through it. And I still was able to create a tiny little space in that room for myself. And um, maybe I'll go back and show you guys that in another video. Um, but yeah, this this having a room to myself um, has really been a luxury and I really appreciate it. Um, but I've also just had a little corner of a closet that I would <laughs> sit in, you know, and I would bring a little lamp and sit it on the floor. And that's where I pray. Um, and actually... <laughs> Those little that little closet got me through a lot of dysfunction, <laughs> a whole lot. So, um, you know what? The Lord can meet you anywhere. It does not have to be some grand room like this. Um, I just so happen to have been blessed to have this here. So I just wanted to add that in there. The Lord can hear you anywhere. I hope you enjoy the room tour and I hope it encourages you to carve out some space for you anywhere, even if it's just in your kitchen in the morning before the kids get up. First, I will be decluttering the room. This room has been a complete disaster for over a year now since we moved in. 
It was full of all of the decisions that I was not ready to make. A lot of things in this room have some sort of emotional tie, even though I might not find them useful. It's full of kids projects and projects when I was a kid and cards. These are cards that I had collected over the years. I don't know why I thought this, but I believed that I should pretty much keep every card that was ever given to me because that was a thought of someone. Thankfully, my husband came to my rescue again. He really helped me tackle this daunting project. And then I got caught in the trap of shifting things around and thinking that I'm actually getting something done when really I'm just misplacing it. But at least I made room for this sectional that I found on Facebook Marketplace for a third of what it would have cost me retail. After finding such a gorgeous sectional, I could not bear the thought of keeping my ugly file cabinet and this ginormous printer that we have in the same room. So I emptied out the closet to see if I could shove it in there. No, I did not measure. I just picked it up and prayed. And now I have the task of going through all the stuff that I slid into the middle of the room to fit in the couch. And to be honest with you, this stuff is actually still on my living room floor two weeks later. Then I began to get overwhelmed, I was feeling stuck, so even though the room wasn't finished, I decided to go ahead and try some paint swatches on the walls to see what color I would paint it. The blue-green color is Riverway by Sherwin-Williams, the white right beside it is Pure White by Sherwin-Williams, and then the beige color that I ended up using for two walls is called Pale Oak and it's by Benjamin Moore. I used this pale oak on both of the walls that would be behind the sectional, but as you can see, I painted the walls and did not address this giant crack. So in my truly dysfunctional order, I had to go back and spackle the wall and then repaint the seam. Normally you should paint your trim before you paint the walls just because it's easier, but since I like to make things difficult on myself, I painted that last. Of course I did not learn my lesson, so I did not spackle before I painted this wall either. Now I said I wanted to use Sherwin-Williams Riverway, and I did, but I didn't want to pay for it, so I decided to take all of these paint samples and paint cans that I had left over in my laundry room and mix my own color. As you can see from this picture, at the very top near my face was the original swatch, so I got pretty close. Because I mixed this color myself, I didn't have enough to use with a paint roller, but I had enough to brush on with a little bit left over. And in dysfunctional fashion again, I went back to spackle. Several days later. Okay, so it's day three of COVID for me, um, and I have people that have accompanied me now. I had started wallpapering it, but, um, and then painting this wall, I've gotta go do the top of the trim. But uh, I also need to clean up some carrot juice on the ground here. Um, but now, I'm sorry, my brain isn't thinking straight. I, I It's like three, is it 3.30, almost four o'clock. And I finally got out of the couch that I've been in for a few days right there. Anyways. This is Julia's first day on it, so hopefully she has a pretty, pretty mild case. <laughs> My husband had a relatively mild case. I think it hit me a little bit harder this time. Yeah, it did. Okay, yeah, he was like, yeah, I'm pretty sure it did. Yeah, I only have about 15 minutes of go time when I get up, so I think I'm gonna start trying to paint the trim. This side is done. I don't know if you can see this. I think you can. There's like a little strip there um, that shows up really bad in the daylight, so I am fixing that. I'm about halfway through. Like your eyes water? Yeah. <laughs> the first time it was just going like. It looks like Lydia might be clear. Yay! All right, bye. Six and a half hours later. All right, it's about 9:15, like six hours later from when I started just that little strip at the top of my walls. I'm gonna try to finish it, but I keep running out of energy.
Hey y'all, it's day, <coughs> excuse me, it's day four, I believe, of COVID, and the only thing I got done today, which was something, was I was able to paint uh, this one strip of trim on the floor. Sorry if the camera's shaky, I'm pretty shaky. Y'all have a good night, and hopefully tomorrow will be better. Several days later. Anyways, the problem is with the wallpaper. None of the pieces that we, apparently I just put up like one wrong piece. Every other piece um, lines up perfectly, but this piece here doesn't. And I can't pull it off the wall and just reuse other ones because it will literally take off all of the paints. I don't know, let's see if it will show it. It will literally take off it's so much paint. So, <clears throat> I have to wait and order like four more rolls. But if you get today, it didn't work. Yeah, none of them they're line all, up. They're all the same. I just need so one to need. line up. That way, you know, this one line can look good. So while I waited for a few more days for more wallpaper to come in, I had a lot of paper, mail, junk mail, and boxes of cards and such to go through. It felt so good to finally get rid of all of this stuff. Even though I wasn't done with the wallpaper yet, I decided to go ahead and hang this lamp that came with the house. Originally, I didn't really care for it up against the white wall and it was real dusty and yuck when I got it, but when I put it up next to the wallpaper and up against the blue, it looks pretty cool, so I decided to keep it. I also decided for better or for worse to go ahead and use the rolls of wallpaper that I already had. I could just let it overlap and I was hoping that in that corner that I'm working in right now that the curtains would cover the transition point. So either way, when I got it all done, I realized that the wallpaper is so busy, you can't really even tell that there's any errors in it and there are quite a few. Would I recommend using this kind of peel and stick wallpaper again? Maybe in a bathroom. I do like that it is waterproof it's very strong vinyl wallpaper but in a in a room that you don't necessarily need waterproof wallpaper I don't know that I would use this again it's it's really difficult to get up there and personally I find it more difficult to use than regular wallpaper that you know just has the paste on the back that you wet I find that much easier to use if anything needs to be measured and done in a specific way, my husband's going to do it. So he hung this really cool, uh, I think it's called a traverse curtain system. They came with the house as well. I love them. I'm really glad gold came back in style because that's my thing. These curtains are about 15 or 16 years old from Big Lots. I ended up needing to buy some of these clips from Amazon so I would be able to hang them properly. I don't really love these metal slat blinds that we have all over the house, but since they serve their purpose, we decided to keep them. However, I felt like this rod looked a little empty. I remember I had this Roman shade that I had bought years ago in Ohio for about $8 actually at a thrift store. Because I was hanging on vinyl, I went ahead and used what I had, which was bathroom grade command hooks, and so far it's stayed. I want you to see something. The rule is that you're always supposed to have curtains that come to the floor. But guess what? These don't. They're a solid foot too short. And do you know how much I care? That much. You know why? Because they're perfect for the space. And it's mostly behind the cabinet or this uh, desk here. So it really doesn't matter. There are so many things that people say so many rules that designers come up with and you know I kind of come up with rules like that for myself too but at the end of the day if you like it just use it I could add an extender on the end I might do that because I have some extra fabric upstairs but for now this is what I want to see here the colors perfect the fabrics perfect and it's just gonna work Starting from the left of the room, this is a Wallace Nutting by Drexel Heritage Hutch. It's actually one whole piece. I really love it. It's got dental molding on the top. It's inlaid mahogany. It's absolutely beautiful. On the top shelf, I have my design books and various art books. I have some pictures, candles. Um, 
and also just some mementos that I have. Um, there's a lot of pictures in that pink box that I have to go through eventually. Um, the two purses are from my father. They are from Mexico and Italy. And on the next shelf, I have my Bibles, more religious material. Um, a lot of my journals are on this shelf along with that big box just has extra paint that I have for whenever I decide to go back and paint one day. The bottom shelf is random books, some that I plan to read soon, um, bills, and also medical files that need to be filed away. This is not the final organization of this cabinet, but it'll do for now. I'm not going to waste my time showing you every drawer right now. Most of them are just full of random bits and bobs at this time. This has all of our printer paper, obviously, and all of the center drawers at the current time have just camera gear in it or electronic mismatched pieces. Most of this stuff is old and doesn't get used. Before I forget, this house on the top of the hutch is a replica of the previous house we owned. It was called Steindom House. It was built in 1876. I plan to give some tours on that in some future videos. Now moving on to my desk. There is kid stuff randomly that pops up just everywhere. I actually need to mend those. <laughs> um, I've got extra camera and electronic gear here too. And just junk. Extra batteries and mics that don't get used. I bought this desk on Facebook Marketplace as well. Actually a vanity. It, I believe, is from around the 1920s. I tend to buy furniture from between the 1920s and the 1940s. I just like that style of furniture. So anyways, yes, this is more of a junk drawer, keeping pens and such in here. It's, it's really not organized. Eventually I'll organize my office and maybe do a tour of that, but to be honest with you, I've never really been good with organizing behind closed doors. So we will see if I grow in that area. When I'm not working from the couch, I work from the desk sometimes. It is not as comfortable as I would like it to be. This chair is from Ikea. It's an acrylic chair. I really love it. I ended up painting the base of it a copper color just because it comes in silver and it's just not my thing. But um, another awesome thing about this desk that I really love is, of course, it was a vanity, so it has this extra compartment, and it fits my computer perfectly. So that's sometimes where I store it when I'm not being lazy. I love the old glass. It's, I don't think it's mercury glass, but it's just old and kind of faded, so it's charming. Just look at that detail. They don't really make furniture like this anymore. It's just really pretty. It's a veneer top. I think it's an Art Deco style. I do love that it came with those acrylic knobs, so it went with the chair. I need visual reminders to keep me from discouragement and dysfunction, so I keep these verses here at my workstation. I'm also terrible at keeping paper clutter, so I keep the shredder right beside my desk. To the right, I also keep my headphones and all of my plug-in jacks. We bought this basket at Home Goods a couple weeks ago, and I love it. I'm not shredding mail like I should, but at least it's cute. I use this candlestick for prayer and Bible reading. It helps me focus. Self-doubt is one of my biggest struggles, so this sign is really just a big, bold way to remind me not to doubt myself. The terrarium is from Hobby Lobby, and the gold dish is from my mother-in-law. Let's just take some time to appreciate how well this works together. The wallpaper, the curtains, they were all bought over a 15-year stretch of time, but they work so well together because they're my style. They're not following trends. So here is the closet and the hidden printer. I have not figured out how I'm going to organize this. I think I'm gonna to need to put some new shelves in it, but for now, it has some leftover pillows, art supplies, papers. My camera gear is here in the corner, and it's just gonna to have to work for now. Finally, we are at the best seat in the room. This sectional I also bought on Facebook Marketplace. It was a lot more than I wanted to spend, but it fit the space so perfectly. This is actually a plant stand and the brass tray was from Ikea. I use it to store blanket and my drinks. 
so this pink pillow it's got red on the back it's actually from world market i bought it a few weeks ago the green pillow was from hobby lobby like probably 10 years ago i've had it for forever there were two of them and they're kind of old so it's kind of frayed but that's okay i still love it it has this really cool print on one side but it matches better on the pink side with my art so that's the way i keep it this corner is where I sit. That gray pillow is actually from a bed set that I got from Kmart years ago. This other pillow is also from World Market. And the blanket, I can't remember. I think I got it for Christmas. Here I've got some art. So the first piece on the left is actually from the Garden Center. Maybe Kmart 10 or 12 years ago. This piece was from a place called Creative Possibilities. It was a friend store and it lights up. Check it out. The two matching shelves were a steal there from Facebook Marketplace. Both of them together were $5. And I use it to store my remote for this super cool light. This shelf is where I keep what I study every day or most days. So I'm studying Spanish right now. I'll keep a notebook next to it. And I also try to journal my prayers every day, every morning first. There's also a devotional that I'm going through. It's my first Spanish devotional ever, and I'm going through it pretty slow, but it's really cool to be able to do that. Um, there's this book. I'm actually going through this book with my husband right now. I keep my calendar and a Spanish version of the Bible because I am trying to become more fluent. The two bookends are actually taped down because I, they have fallen and they hurt. I bought this rug about eight years ago in Columbus, Ohio. It is from Home Goods, I think, and I just love the pattern on it. Now, under the couch is where I store some of my workout gear and leftover art that, art projects that I did back in college, maybe. I haven't done art in a while, so maybe one day. Lastly, it's my inspiration wall. The candle obviously represents my light letting it shine. The three pictures are all from my husband. This one up top I really love. She looks like she's completed a good day's work, so Proverbs 31 woman right there. This next image is my favorite. It reminds me that even if things look like a mess, even if your mind is a mess, it can actually be a beautiful mess. This next image reminds me that life is about people and relationships and not success. No surprise here, but this Peacock Vintage Mail Holder is also from Facebook Marketplace. I use it to store my prayers that I have printed out, some that I like to remember. Um, this is a prayer for my husband. It's just scripture. It's Psalm 112. This is something that I got from my spiritual mother. It reminds me of who I am because, like I said before, I truly struggle with discouragement. This next image reminds me to be able to pray and forgive as Christ forgave us. And on the next shelf or holder, pocket, whatever this is, <laughs> I keep just random encouraging quotes that honestly I haven't gone through in a while. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with this or with the clipboard, but um, I use these pretty frequently in the past. So they've been a great help and for now, that's where they're going to stay. And that's the room. There's a lot that probably needs to be tweaked um, as far as functionality goes, especially behind closed doors, but I'm super happy with it and totally blessed to have it. Well guys, thank you so much for watching. And if you like the video or not, then please subscribe um, just for no other reason than to see the stories that I have to tell because I have quite a few that I think might interest you. Also, this is a pretty tiny channel, but the devil has been fighting so hard to get me to not video like ever. <laughs> like he has messed with my health. He has messed with my family. He's messed with all kinds of stuff. So subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and I will see you in the next one. Ciao.